So, in the second part, we're going to look at the rules of epidemiology. Um, again, we're going to have some definition and, and talk about how we think about people's risks to particular issues associated with lifestyle and life course, and talk a little bit about public health interventions later on. Okay, so risk factors for his disease. Uh, a reminder of the basic principle of epidemiology as well, and its stated role, and also a co key conclusion, conclusion from the Marmot report, uh, these two down at the bottom here. Uh, health issues are factors that potentially increase the risk of developing a disease. Not potentially. Uh, we never say, alluding back to something we said a bit earlier on, that X causes Y. It may increase the rate of Y in a population. Um, again, as noted earlier on, uh, problems are unequally distributed in populations with a wide range of potentially influential factors. Uh, and as I say, many of which were re reviewed in the Marmot Review, Fair Society, Healthy Lives. Uh, some more definitions. The spectrum of a disease. In some people, the disease process may never progress to a clinically apparent illness. In others, the disease progress process may result in, in illness that changes from mild, severe, or even fatal. This range is called a spectrum of disease. Ultimately, the disease process ends either in recovery, disability, or death. And we notice the difference there in some issue. I forget what it was. Uh, between a well-nourished people in the developed world and people who are malnourished or immune or suppressed in other parts of the world which aren't, aren't quite as well off. Okay, so here's an activity for you to be done before the next session. Uh, research these contributing factors for these, some of these. Pick one, maybe work as individuals, maybe work as groups. Do a list, do a mind map, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. There's a list there if you want to make any others. Uh, have a look at them and we'll share them in the next session. Uh, okay, so causal factors are complicated. Uh, Rothman's causal pi is one of the models which has been used to suggest a, a, a metaphor for how these things work. It, it's not a practical rule, it, it just gives us some information on some, some ways of thinking about how things happen. Um, as the link paper says, life is all about cause and effect. Uh, and here's a classic example. The lights don't shine because they each have a light bulb. There's a white and a light bulb. So the switches are on. There's a power grid. There's a power source. If you take any of these factors away, there is no light. Uh, the system is set to contain 500% 500, 500 causality. For all five factors are 100% causative for the shining of the light. There is no limit to the causes some outcome, which is, uh, which is an interesting insight, particularly when we're related to disease. Uh, Another definition, sufficient cause and the causal pi model. Uh, this represents a way of conception causality. A sufficient cause is a constellation of component causes, the causal pi that leads to an outcome. Uh, and we draw it like this. So A, B and C are factors which may cause, cause may increase the rate of particular disease. Uh, one outcome in this model is the different pies, that is different collections of causal factors may lead to the same outcome. Uh, causal factors are likely to accumulate over the course of a lifetime, which brings us back to the life cost model. More of this in a moment. The point of that, about this is the damage at least potentially accumulates with age. So at age one, there may be one or two causal factors in a range of different areas which have, uh, which have uh, developed as you get to the second age. That's not age, age, age year two. It's, it's perhaps middle age, for example, where there's more of the factors of impacted a3 might be might be elderly people where mo many more factors have impacted including some which may lead directly to the disease but the point is damage accumulates uh, which brings us some some interesting consequences potentially another potential consequence of the model is the suggestion that normal aging cannot be separated from pathological processes causing disease later in life this is slightly controversial if you want more background uh, have a read of this paper uh, okay, non-communicable diseases. These are diseases that cannot be communicated from one person to another. They kill around 40 million people each year and about 70% of deaths globally. Uh, NCDs are chronic in nature, that is they have long latency periods and may cause long-term problems. Latency period means the time before the symptoms of the disease manifest themselves. Um, 
causes of death can be grouped in three categories, communicable, communicable infectious and parasitic diseases, and maternal, perinatal and nutritional conditions, non-communicable chronic diseases and injuries. Uh, as mentioned, globally, seven of the ten leading causes of deaths in 2019, where this data comes from, were non-communicable diseases. Uh, so in many cases, associated with lifestyle. Uh, this is from Tabish, 2017. He proposed these characteristics of NCDs. Uh, again, a definition here. Etiology is the study of causation or origin of diseases. Their complexity is reflected in models like causal pies. And we notice the range of issues which may be potentially of issue here. Uh, some risk factors can be modifiable, meaning people can take measures to change them or non-modifiable, meaning there can't be changes. So here are some modified risk factors, many of which have been much in the news this year with respect to uh, coronavirus and changes in lifestyle. Uh, these are key non-modifiable risk factors, uh, age, race, gender and genetics. Um, they do map onto the first set as well in some cases, of course, and it is complex as we mentioned a little, a little while ago. Uh, metabolic risk factors include things like high BMI and its association, for example, with increased risk of type 2 diabetes. These are potentially somewhat modifiable, of course, by changes in lifestyle. Uh, which brings us to public health interventions. Uh, there's a growing uh, emphasis in public health and the importance of evidence-based interventions to improve population health and reduce health inequalities. Uh, we do need to collect evidence on their effectiveness. Uh, here's some public health uh, intervention. It, public health is a, a map for public health interventions. We identify a problem. Uh, the child perhaps being taken too much by the uh, sweeties rather than the fruit. Uh, we think of an intervention. Maybe we could have cougary, introducing children and parents to cougary. And then we look to see if there's any measurable improvement in outcomes. Now, you're probably saying straight away, well, we won't know for many years whether it's benefit the health of the child. So we, we do look at other things, which we'll talk about again in other lectures. So we might, we might look at uh, BMI of the population in a particular area, for example. So here are a range of public health uh, interventions. Uh, there's a good definition of them. And this is the American CDC, the Center for Disease Controls list of the 10 greatest public health interventions in the last century. They are obviously large scale, longer national and often international in interventions. Uh, allied to this, there are numerous examples of smaller scale interventions, which may be associated with these, such as smoking reduction, for example, uh, and maybe in other areas. Um, these are big areas, mountains of small interventions have been done. Uh, this is the RSP, Royal Society for Public Health, equivalent list for UK, and it makes very interesting reading. It's strongly recommended you have a look at this, and you might want to think about how many of these are actually still active at the moment. Uh, do they work? Yes, there is evidence that they these public health interventions work. Uh, this report reviews the evidence for improvements in cardio, uh, cardi in, in, in health, heart, dis in heart disease over a 50-year period. You can't find it, but it just seems to be a very slow download. But if you're interested in this for a project, it's probably worth persevering. But we notice from the infographic, uh, significantly reduced number of people having died from coronary heart disease. Uh, some pretty convincing trends on CHD in general, and all led in the right direction, if still a long way to go. Uh, and a summary of the relationships between conditions and public health interventions. Uh, again, if you're interested in this as a project, this might be a sort of good map for you to start your thinking with. Right, okay, that's all for the couple of short lectures in epidemiology.